All right, all right out there. Good morning. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it is the day we call Friday. Okay? This is Brother Zachariah, and uh, we finna get down. We finna get down this morning. Uh, and we just gonna talk a little bit about Black History Month and where our focus should be, you know, during this time and, and all the time. Right? Give me a minute. Give me my life. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so thank God it's Friday. Thank God it is Friday. I hope everybody's doing well out there. This is Brother Zachariah Ben Israel coming at you live, right? And I'm gonna talk this morning about uh Black History Month. You know, uh, you know, this is the time of the year, you know, where uh, you know, we like to look at all the accomplishments of uh so-called African American people, you know, during the uh, servitude and captivity. You know, during slavery time, uh, here in America and other places around the world. Okay, let me get me something to drink real quick, and we'll get it on. Right. So this is a Friday morning thing. You know what I'm talking about? Friday morning. We about to be up. Get ready for the time. Time, not really in no rush, y'all. Taking my time this morning. Okay. Thank God it's Friday. You know, uh, we thank the Lord <clears throat> for another day. You know, to see, uh, to see uh, this side of the coming of the Lord's side of the day. You know, in this current life out here, uh, among the living. The Lord said us, you know, he said, he said, uh, a, a, a live dog is better than a dead lion. So we thank God in the mighty name of Jesus for another day, right? But it is, uh, what they call Black History Month. And, um, you know, I have, uh, you know, spoke to a couple of people, you know, about this time of the year, you know, because, you know, I got, uh, Folk, you know, people I know that got platforms out here. Everybody's, you know, getting on this George Washington Carver thing. You know, and all the stuff that uh, our people uh, accomplished during this time of captivity and slavery, uh, mainly here in America, you know, uh, American captivity, you know, transatlantic slave trade <clears throat> and all this right here, uh, which is good. I won't say anything negative about none of that because, uh, you know, um, the Lord has blessed us out here, you know, in this, in this, in this place of our captivity, uh, you know, in spite of a lot of things that we've had to endure and go through, even to this very day. So I thank God for carrying, carrying us and doing, helping us to be able to have hope in Christ that we might be able to endure until the end and hang in there, right? And wait on God. But uh, <clears throat> is that where our focus really need to be? You know, um, you know, I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Because I tell you me, I'm talking about myself, <clears throat> right? When it comes to Black History Month, yes, you know, I'm thankful for a lot of accomplishments that people before me was able to accomplish. Because, you know, the world we live in right now in this captivity, even in this captivity, 
would not be what it is had not these sacrifices been done by other people. You know, um, you know, we can talk about Harriet Tubman, you know, like uh the transatlantic, you know, uh the underground railroad thing, you know, um, you know, these people, you know, they they was able to help a lot of uh slaves, you know, um uh, get freedom and different things. And then, you know, there was other uh, famous Blacks or famous African-American people, you know, so-called African-Americans that, uh, you know, are responsible for certain inventions that we enjoy even to this day. You know, like the invention of, you know, the the, the, the stop sign, not the stop sign, but the, the traffic light, traffic light, um, you know, African-American man, uh, for the first African American man, the first man to perform open heart surgery was an African American. You know, um, George Washington and Carver, Martin Luther King, um, the civil rights leaders, the civil rights movement, all of that. You know, so there was different things that did take place. You know, to help improve some of the conditions of what we're living in here today. All right. But, you know, and this might hurt some people, I don't know, right? But I don't really believe, you know, uh, everything that was intended to be accomplished for our people really was ever accomplished, you know, um, even with the civil rights movement. There was a lot of progress that was made, but there's a lot of things that still remain unbalanced. You know, we're not, you know, we're still going through hell out here, bottom line up front. You know, um, you know, it looks like there's, you know, uh, a fight for voting rights, and even now, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, so I won't get into the specifics of a lot of those political things with that, but I will say this right here, right? On this blog, what I'm going to talk about this morning is this, right? Where is it that our focus need to be as a so-called Negro, right? Should we focus on... Uh, the servitude in America? Maybe, you know, but it's some good things, you know. I mean, you know, uh, I don't know, man. You know, it's it's good things that we can talk about, you know, concerning uh, our people, you know, that they was able to accomplish and all of that. I'm not knocking, I'm not kicking against none of that stuff, right? I'm very thankful for it. A lot of these things happen, you know, before my generation came along. And had it not been that way, you know, we wouldn't have certain rights we had. You know, I was able to serve in the United States military, the United States Army, you know, because of some of the uh, progress that was made by others, you know? So I'm not against any of that. But today I'll tell you, you know, I don't believe that's where our primary focus need to be. Right, because as a people, we're still broken spiritually. You know, um, that's something that have not really been seriously dealt with, in my opinion. Um, 1619 come along, you know, the transatlantic slave trade took place because the Lord set forth things in the word of God. And he said what he said to the children of Israel. If you break my laws, set your commandments, all these curses are going to befall you. You look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, so-called African-American people, so-called black folks out there. You see what I'm talking about. So the very reason that our people ended up going into slavery to start with, right? That's what we need to focus on. Why did this happen to us? Why did it happen? That being said, let's let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and the verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and the verse 1, right? We're just going to do a short discussion, a short blog on talking about this right here, right? Because, um, I don't know, it's just sort of bittersweet and kind of aggravating at the same time, you know, to see, to hear so many people hollering about what we did while we were slaves, what we did during slavery, what we did. I mean, in, in my opinion, we still slaves now. A lot of people wouldn't agree with that, right? But I believe we still in a form of captivity right now, right? As, as so-called African-American people, I, I believe we are. Um, you know, there's no regard for our lives. Um, many of us are, you know, still going through injustices and, 
you know, murders and killings and different, I mean, things that, you know, uh, could be avoided. You know, I don't believe that blacks have to die as often as we do with every situation that go on. I don't think, you know, uh, you know, the end result should always be one of us is dead somewhere, you know, and, you know, we're leaving, a, leaving behind a bunch of children and, and wives and bills and responsibilities and wealth, even more wealth, you know, because a lot of our generational wealth was destroyed as a result of slavery. You know, nobody won't really say much about that. You know, um, you know, there was there was so-called African-American people, free slaves, they had land, you know, they had land and businesses and a whole lot of stuff, right? And somehow we don't have that today. Many people don't even know about it. That's the shameful part. It's in this very day. Many people don't even know that. Right? You know, some stuff like uh, the legacy of Black Wall Street or what they call Black Wall Street. Uh, you know, many people, I hope people are talking about it because uh, it should be something that should be remembered. But um, I'm not sure about that today. I don't hear it. I don't see it prevalent, you know, in the communities, Black communities and all this. But let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Right? What does it say? And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, that means listen closely to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Right? And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, right? If thou shalt hearken, meaning listen unto the voice of the Lord thy God, right? Then from verse three, all let's go, verse three all the way down to uh, verse fifteen. You know, there's a lot of blessings that we can read that Moses, you know, talked to the children of Israel about. Should they agree and comply? and obey to keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. That means live by the Ten Commandments that were given, right? All the statutes and the judgments of the Most High God, even Jesus Christ that they was given, right? That was a condition for all these blessings to remain with the children of Israel that the Bible speaks of, according to what we can read out the Bible, right? Okay? Because in Deuteronomy chapter 28, right, we, we can observe also that there's a uh, a group of people that call themselves Jews now today, they never suffer none of this, right? So <clears throat> the, what you read in Deuteronomy chapter 28 you have to fit the people that God chose. That's how you find God's chosen people. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse uh, 1 down to 68. That whole chapter, really, and that's going to show you, right, the conditions that befell the children of Israel, right? All the curses that befell the children of Israel, that's what you're going to see. And you'll be again to understand that these curses that the Bible mentioned had to have happened to, a, to somebody, right? Because these are the people that God is talking about. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, whoever these curses fit, right? And these curses don't fit everybody, right? And these curses don't fit the people that's walking around calling themselves Jews today, right? Because we can read a lot of these things and we can't see nowhere in history that these people ever went through none of this. So it can't be talking about them, right? So now, we're in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's pick it up at verse 15. Let's start out saving the problem, right? Because we can look at the lump and the bruise. But we gotta understand where was the, you know, the stick that hit us upside the head. That's what we gotta figure out. Look at that. Deuteronomy 28 in the verse 15. He said, But it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken. So remember, he said, What would happen if we do hearken or listen diligently to the voice of the Lord that God to do all his commandments and statutes which he commanded? He said, uh, By blessings. Now, the Lord is telling the consequences of not doing that, right? 
And this is where I believe my focus ought to be. Ain't nothing wrong with talking about all this stuff that our people was able to accomplish, you know, doing uh captivity, slavery, and all of this, right? But these things, this thing right here is the most important, right? We gotta look at we gotta look at what put us in the servitude anyway. Right? Because a lot of us don't like it. Don't nobody want to be no slave. Don't nobody want to be in captivity. Don't nobody want to be treated wrong. Right? People don't want to go through hell. People don't want to be mistreated. You don't want to be, uh, you know, living in this condition that we are now. You know, complaining about inequality and voting rights and, you know, nobody not being fair and, you know, uh, black lives matter and everybody's shooting black folks and killing black folks and black folks is going to jail, right? More at a higher rate than many other people getting, you know, getting 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 slapped with charges where other people get slapped with slap on the wrist, right? We get major charges, get felonies, go to prison, get sentences and all kind of stuff, right? That's what it seemed to be. So we don't want that. But why is the reason? What's the reason that we still? What, what's the reason that we're going through that? Deuteronomy chapter twenty and verse fifteen. We say, "But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to, uh, to do all His commandments and His statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee." Then he starts speaking in sixteen. Curse shall there be in the city, and curse shall there be in the field. So whether you're in the country, the city, no matter where you find yourself, you're going to be cursed. It's going to be a sign of some kind of curse on you and your people. Right? He said, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Even the businesses that we have. Right? And uh, our, our ability, you know, to, to uh, you know, to perform certain kind of businesses, you know, for prosperity, to live off of. Right? So look at the number of black businesses we have, look at the type we have. You know, we don't have a bunch of stuff that, uh, you know, in other words, we got to go buy our groceries with other nations. Everything we really need, we got to go to other people to get it, other nations that's not us. We got to go to get cars to, from another, a whole other people. To get a house, you got to go to a whole other people. To go to the bank, you got to go to a whole nother people. To get a job, you got to go to a whole nother people. Why? That's the thing that we need to be focused on right there. Right? <clears throat> Let's skip down to verse 19. What he say? The Lord said, Curse shall thou be when thou comest in, and curse shall thou be when thou goest out. So you're going to be cursed when you're born in this world and born into this captivity. And you will be cursed when you leave this captivity. Right? That's right. He said, the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. Right? And all that thou sayest thy hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed. And until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings. See what he's talking about? This why? Because of the wickedness of thy doing, I want to keep no law, that's no commandment. Whereby, whereby what? Thou hast forsaken me. That means we don't forsook the Lord. We ain't gonna keep no laws, no statutes, no commandments, right? We talking the commandments, but we picked up at uh, commandment number four. Many of us, that's the most famous commandment. Everybody got a hookah. You know, you got some kind of hookah going on in all this right here, man. Sunday ain't no dog on this the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is, is the day we call Saturday. That's the seventh day that the Lord had to sanctify. Negroes ain't going to keep that. Many of us right now, in the state of mind we in right now, dealing with Roman Christianity, that fourth commandment is going to be a problem. You're going to come up with something else. Right? Well, if it was good enough for mama, it was good enough for me. Well, you know, Somebody go and uh, deal with you in the rights of Paul. You're going to use the rights of Paul to get out of that fourth commandment. Right? The dietary law is part of the royal law. That's part of these laws, statutes, and commandments that the Lord is mentioning right here. Right? We're going to go to the rights of Paul and we're going to figure out, you know what? Everything clean. 
for me to eat. Uh, you know, I ain't got to worry about nothing. ain't clean. I, I can eat anything I want. Just as long as I pray over it. That's what will be determined by us. Right? And those very things right there, that's forsaking the Lord. Because he's got a dietary law for you. Right? But you don't believe that dietary law. You're going to eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, catfish. Uh, everything else is unclean. Everybody else is eating it. So you're going to eat it. <clears throat> right? You gonna, Well, you know, I eat a little bit of pork. You know, this is some of the stuff out here. But I don't eat that much. You know, I, well, I do it in moderation. The Lord said don't do it at all. But we're eating, we're, eating, we're, we're, we're sinning against God all the time. Always in contempt of the Lord. Right? Look what he said in the word, though. See? That's what we got to pay attention. Let's get down to verse 27. Verse 27, what does it say? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and the verse 27. No, 37. My bad. Go ahead. Skip down. Wait a minute. 29. Let's start at 29. Deuteronomy 28 and the verse 29, right? He said, And thou shalt grow up at noonday as the blind grow up in, dark, in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, right? And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Because we are oppressed and spoiled. You want to put Christmas trees up, but your God didn't get at you. What the world are these summer 25 talking about? That ain't Jesus' birthday. That's some kind of um, Babylonian pagan tradition. Right? That you bring in the house. <clears throat> but the Holy Word of God, don't consider the Bible sign that. Lord, I don't you put in no Christmas tree. You need to celebrate no traditions and, and customs of all these nations around us. Right? That's right. So he said, because we are here breaking the laws, statute commandments, understand. Right? He said, I should be only oppressed and spoiled every no man should save thee. That's right. Oppressed and spoiled, and no man should save thee. Everybody keep marching in the street. Black lives matter. You know, all of this right here, you know, going from city to city, raising all the hell about <clears throat> what's going on in the streets and all this right here, right? But nobody put it to mind. If I keep God's law, says commandment, how would my life be different? Because Friday and Saturday, you won't be out there in the club. Friday and Saturday, you won't be out there road raising on the highway and getting turned up and all of this. You wouldn't be out there doing Our people would not be caught up in all this stuff that we're caught up in Friday and Saturday. That's when most of this stuff happens. When the weekend come, you can look You can look to see it in the news. It's going to be a whole lot of us that's caught up in stuff. And matter of fact, the way it's starting to get right now, if you talk to social media, it seems like every day there's something going on with us. There's a whole lot of us is getting in trouble, getting locked up, getting shot up, or either killing some woman or something. Okay? Let's go ahead and read. Verse 30. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 30. What did he say? He said, Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Right? He said, Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. I shall plant a vineyard, right? And shall not gather the grapes thereof. So who does that sound like? You know, somebody that's, you know, uh, working in the field and don't take nothing back out the field for themselves, right? Somebody that built, you built in the houses, but you're not dwelling in them. <coughs> See that? Excuse me, right? Okay. And then he said, look at this. Top of 30, he said, thou shalt betroth a wife. So, so we, somebody going to have a wife and another man going to live with her. Who did this stuff happen to? If it's in the Bible, then it happened to somebody. So who was it that happened to? Right? The so-called Negro. The so-called African-American. Our, our foreparents had these slaves. Our foreparents had, were slaves. They had wives on the plantations. Right? And the slave masters, y'all know the deal. We've heard it. Right, y'all know what happened. But the Bible speaks. 
He said, that's a betrothed wife and another man shall lie with her. Okay? Then after he sleep with your wife, you're going to go build him a house. And, but you ain't going to lay in it. You're going to lay in the barn like an animal. Okay? Let's go ahead. And then you're going to go plant his crops. And then he's going to go gather his food for him. And bring it and let him eat it. <clears throat> but you ain't going to have nothing. All right? Mm. So it's getting, I'm getting up. Right? Skip down to verse 32, what he's saying. That sons and that daughters shall be given to another people, and that eye shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Right? And there shall be nobody in thine hand. Right? So your sons and daughters are going to be given to another people. How did this happen during the slave time? Huh? Because the, cause the slave master took the children of the slaves and sold them to different plantations. Right? So they had the parents working on one plantation. And then when them children get old enough to get out there and work, and all this right here, they sell them kids out to different plantations. Right? Right? Or well, if you look back in history, well, if you really search diligently, you'll find out during so called Christmas time. That's what they did. They take your dress, they take your baby that you love so much, right? They dress your baby up, put some nice clothes on him, right? And oil him down, right? They shine him up real good, make him look good and pretty, and all this right here, and take him and give them, give your child to another family for Christmas. And you putting up a dog on Christmas tree. See, See, when we look and find out these things that actually happened in history, how can we keep doing some of the stuff we know? I wish I hear like put a Christmas tree in my house. Now that I realize that these things actually happened to the so-called African American, the so-called black people, right? What kind of crap? What kind of mess is that? Y'all know how y'all feel about some of your children out there. Think about it. Right? No money in your hand to stop nothing. And somebody come and dress your child up and give your baby to another family for a Christmas gift. Right? That they might use your child as, as, a, as a workhorse. Why? So what I'm saying, why is our focus on all this other stuff? Ain't nothing wrong with you know understanding these great these great accomplishments. Don't nobody get off talking foolish now. <clears throat> it's all good. Let's talk about the accomplishments that uh so-called African American people accomplish here in America. Nothing wrong with that. But what's up with this part? What's going on with this part? Right? We should be focused on how did we get in this condition? What happened to us? Right? Our people failed to keep them laws, that's the commandments, right? Everybody know the story, right? You heard that before in most of your churches out here, right? Okay? About let my people go. How did that start? Moses and Aaron them was out there in the wilderness. They made a golden calf. And when they made that golden calf, the most high God kept his word. He said, if you don't hearken to my law, his commandments, and diligently listen and obey them, I'm going to curse you. And we're going to find out if we read, right, one of them curses was that y'all are going to go into slavery, right? Already with slaves in Egypt, Moses, I sent Moses to get you out of Egypt, right? But you're going to go back into the condition of slavery again, but this time by way of cargo slave ships, and y'all going to be sold as male and female slaves. And I'm going to spread you to all the four corners of the earth. That's right. I'm going to scatter y'all everywhere. And y'all will be slaves. This is a curse that God put on our people. Right? So when you look at, I mean, it's kind of backwards to me. Because how in the world is our people talking so much about all this stuff? I mean, you smile and grin it. With the, with the token on the bone of being thrown on Black History Month, which is 30 days. And that's supposed to depict. All of our history. That's supposed to talk about who we are and where we came from. No, nah, we didn't come from slavery, right? Our people 
was somewhere else before slavery. They were plucked up. They were taken from one place and brought to another. So there was a history about us that went on before we got in this, before our people got to the cargo slave ship. What was that history about? Who was we then? Right? This biblical record that you got right here in your hand got a lot of, this it's got a lot of biblical information and records on who you was before you was put in the cargo slave ship. Right? So, you know, I understand it, but that ain't the only thing I'm teaching my young around here, right? My son around here, my baby boy and all that, that ain't the only thing he's learning. He's learning the truth about his people as told by the prophets in the Bible. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I seen a message from one of the, the fellow brethren out there. You know, he liked the comment I gave him. But that's what I'm talking about. So these things right here don't never get talked about. Why our people don't talk about this, right? Okay, always hollering this black thing, black thing. But man, come on, you know what? <clears throat> I understand that, and I, I'm not saying it's not important, but I'm saying this right here got to be more important because we got to look at what the hell we doing and why we in this situation that we in, and how in the world can we get out of it? Because it don't seem that the politicians gonna help us. It don't seem that. Uh, the law system and all of this is going to help. No seeing that we can vote nobody in to help us, right? You can't petition the court to help you, right? You can't get a lawyer to help you. I mean, we can't. We got a whole laundry list of things that's going on, right? And that's here in America, but we, our people all over the world. So everywhere we go, something wrong. Because we are being treated like dogs in this earth. And we've been killed. And record numbers. Somebody try to take us out. All right? Let's go ahead and read. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right? Look at the verse 33. He said, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. See what the Bible says? Deuteronomy 28 verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall another nation which thou knowest not eat up. So somebody else, another people going to come and they're going to benefit off your labors, right? They're going to eat the fruit of your land, right? They're going to they gonna benefit from you being a slave, right? They're going to benefit from it. You're going to work your behalf, off, but you're not going to get the benefit from all that work. Wealth that was uh, that was supposed to be generated for that work, you never gonna get paid, right? You run around the day talking about reparations, right? <laughs> but what does the Bible say, right? The fruit of thy land and all thy labors, all your labors, shall another nation which thou knowest not eat up, right? So when we think about the context of this time frame. This is another nation of people that the people that's being talked about did not know. Our foreparents didn't know these people that took them captive and put them in some in the other the cargo slave ships and shipped them all over the place, right? And sold them, right? They didn't know who they were. They didn't know they did not know these people. He said, the fruit of thy land and all and all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be what? Only oppressed and crushed always. God said in this curse here that we're going to be what? Oppressed and crushed always. So that thou shalt what? Be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Look at verse 34, right? He said we're going to be oppressed so bad, right? And we're going to be crushed so harshly and gruesomely in this earth, right? That we're gonna be mad. I mean, you're gonna be pissed off. You're gonna be about crazy for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. You'll be thinking, oh my God, that's a 12 year old. Oh my God, that's a 16 year old. Oh my Lord, that's a baby. Oh my goodness, he didn't do nothing. They beat him to death. They put his put their knees in the neck and killed him, right? Think about it. <coughs> Some of these things, right? Lord, have mercy, man. 
My, I'm dry throat this morning. Just getting started. Right? He said, if we're going to be mad for the sight of that eye, what we going to see? Right? Let's get down to verse 37. What is that? 28 and 37. And that should become what? An astonishment. That means a shocking. A proverb and a Bible among all nations. That means among all the people whether the Lord shall lead thee. So wherever you go, you're going to be a shocking and you're going to be a proverb and a byword. Somebody asked the question of why is they still using the N word? Right? Somebody said something about like that. Why is people still using the N word? I guess they're talking about white folk or some white people that use the N word in a derogatory manner against our people. Let's read this verse again. Your God said what? And that should become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all the nations, meaning among all the people, whether the Lord shall lead thee. Right? Why? Because you didn't want to keep no laws, no statutes, no commandments. That's what it is. Let's get down to verse 41. 41. He said, Thou shall be, he said, Thou shall beget sons and daughters. So you gonna have children, but thou shalt not enjoy them. For they shall go into captivity. So you're going to have sons and daughters, but you're not going to enjoy your sons and daughters because they're going to end up going into slavery and captivity. Right? So what I'm trying to say is, when you look at what you're talking about celebrating Black History Month and all this right here, that's all right. But some of these things we can read in the Bible point out the reason we became, that we ended up in slavery to start with. Right? And God is telling us about all of this. Right? By beginning sons and daughters and not enjoying them because they're going to go into slavery. Right? It's still going on now. Today is a different kind of slavery now. We be getting sons and daughters, but they go to the prison house. Or either they get killed in the streets because we're not keeping no laws, statutes, and commandments. Our children, you know what? We ain't parents no more. We friends with our kids. We buddies the power with our children, right? And, uh, you know, they don't keep no laws. And parents don't keep no, so parents ain't keeping no commandments, and you're not teaching your children to keep no commandments, right? Many of our kids is out here getting, you know, getting all these children out of wedlock and all this stuff right here, and ain't nobody saying nothing, nobody talking to them. You're not teaching them that marriage is honorable. You're not really teaching these children. You're not showing them that example right there. A lot of the households that these children are coming from, right? There ain't nobody married in that house. Right? And all of this right here. And mama is a 90s girl. And she living in the 90s world. Remember that song? I'm the 90s girl. You got that going on. You know, grandma and them guys, they get their fingernail done. You know what I'm saying? So, this stuff is not being taught to the youth. Right? Oh, girl, he cute. Yeah, y'all's a good couple. That's the kind of stuff we tell our young people when they get out here and get involved in the relationship. So we're teaching them how to be whoremongers, right? How to get out here. We're teaching them the habit of laying out, laying up, laying up and laying around. Well, it's all right to have a boyfriend. Oh, girl, he cute. You know, he's nice. I mean, you know, y'all go, you know, go to the movie, eat some dinner. You know, y'all have some fun. And y'all know what they finna do. They finna get out there and get away from the grown people. And they finna, next thing you know, woo wee. Lord, she gonna have a baby. Lord have mercy. It's a blessing. We start that too early. Because ain't nobody got no money for these children, man. Ain't nobody got a plan for these children. And a lot of these kids is born like that. They've been born into unstructured families. Because we're not teaching them nothing. Right? So if it ain't our children that go to jail, it's our children's children that end up going to jail. That's right. Yeah, he's gonna be in crimes. These little mugs, they boy, they grow up with no direction, no laws, no statutes, no commandments. Cause nobody ain't gonna have this foundation of understanding right here, right? And they out here shooting people. You know, going to jail and stuff, right? And then we arguing about, you know, injustice and 
what's going on in this system and the white man and you know the law enforcement and they're not doing this right and they're trying to do something 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 come on now if we if we try to curb the situation right here to stop our children from becoming thugs right walking around in the gang and stuff you know talking about they got a man in the gang because the gang is more like a family to them because the family at home ain't doing nothing with them you lying to them you know what i'm talking about you know what I'm saying? And you treat them like they're stupid. Right? You're trying to tell them that the first day of the week is the seventh day. That's, come on now. Right? you try to tell them Jesus died on Friday, rose Sunday morning and sunrise. Right? you try trying to tell them that giving Christmas and Easter and all the stuff that you give them in Roman Christianity is what's going to cause them to be blessed. God is going to prosper them and God is going to do so many things for them, right? Bless them with housing, cars, and prosperity, and good jobs, and all kinds of stuff, right? But no laws, no statutes, no commands, right? And that's weakness towards the Lord. We started this in Deuteronomy 12, chapter 28. The Lord spoke about it in the word of God that we have forsaken him. So when we forsake the Lord, not to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments, right? That's what we're teaching the children. That's the only thing I'm talking about. So what's more important? You talk about this stuff, talking about so-called Black History Month. Okay, that ain't all it is, right? You go talk about that stuff there, but this need to be talked about too. You need to let your children know why. Stop lying to these children, telling them that all these white people is hateful, because every white person ain't hateful. Stop telling them that, right? Stop telling them that somebody's outside and hate them because of their skin color. It might be somebody somewhere, right? But the, the but the major reason that black people is in the condition that we're in is because of disobedience to our God. We, we done forsook the Lord. Ain't nobody finna keep no laws that's a commandment. And many of us do not believe that these commandments are keeping this royal law and living by this royal law is gonna restructure our lives. Right? We don't even believe that's going to put us in a, 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 a situation of spiritual balance. We'd rather be spiritually imbalanced. Right? That's what the whole thing is. So we're not teaching this stuff to the young people. Right? We're not teaching this stuff to them. We're not showing it to them. So we're still losing them. Right? They're not literally being sold to no other plantation. But if you look at the situation, if you raise a, if you raise a kid up today, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, up to 25, and they end up going to prison, if not killed in the street for doing something stupid, you know, hanging out. Come on now. You, you got to tell your children the truth. They cannot hang out Friday and Saturday night. They can't be smoking weed. They can't be riding around drinking and driving. They cannot be walking, riding around out here not keeping the law of the land. And not keeping God's law either. Not keeping God's law and not keeping a law of the land is a recipe for disaster. You asking for trouble. I've had people in my family, how you gonna debate me about a damn old container? Come on now. You cannot ride around with alcohol bottle in the car. Period. I don't care who car it is. I don't care who got the license. It's against the law and damn near by every state. You cannot have no open alcoholic beverage container in a car. Period. But you know what Negro say? Well, you know, I mean, you know, I was just going down the street. I mean, you know, I was just going right there. I mean, you know, I live right over here. I was just going down the street. I was just, I, 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 I put the handcuffs on. Huh? Walk this field sobriety test, right? Oh, you intoxicated? Okay, so if you wasn't the driver of the car, you intoxicated, so you, okay. Now I'm going to give you a charge for you know, being drunk in the public. You getting a charge, though. And the one that was driving probably going to get some kind of charge, you know, some kind of hit against their license now. Because you want to ride around with open containers. <laughs> well, you know, God made everything grow in the earth, so ain't nothing wrong with weed. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I mean, God made herb in the earth for man to eat. And you know, but the law of the land says it's illegal. So if it's illegal to smoke the stuff, and God told you to be sober and diligent, watch your mind on all these trees all the time, cutting up some stuff. 
What are we doing that for? This is stuff that keep us behind the eight ball. That's what we're teaching our young. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It, it hurt, it's hurtful to me, right? Because I got a couple that I really care about, right? And I've seen some of them. They walk around with blunts in their hand, man. They got a blunt. And they nothing but a child walk around with a blunt. You know, they don't really know how to hold the thing. And all this right looking funny with the blunt in their hand. But they walk around, puffity puff, puffity puff. And somebody teaching them to puffity puff. And all this right here. But the so-called white officer that catch your ass with the weed or smelling the paraphernalia of the weed in the car. This going, man, come on. This going to raise his suspicion, right? For, hey, wait a minute. There's some dope going on. This person breaking the law, right? Now, I, you know what I'm saying? I want, maybe some of them want to be mean. Maybe some of them do want to be mean. I don't know, right? But the whole thing is, right, if somebody want to be mean and they're an officer and they smell weed on your ass, guess who just gave them the stick to say, pop out. You just gave them the stick to crack your ass over the head with. It's like a clown beating himself. What was that thing, man? It was a clown back in the day. What was his name? Homie don't play that. What is it, homie? Homie don't play that. I think with that thing, he's the, that clown used to beat it. He the step in the head. It's the same thing, right? But the bottom line, this is the base of the arguments that we're having. I can't believe that we are the people that actually have fallouts over this, right? That's right, because I've had to, you know, bring to the attention of people, don't come to my house with that shit, right? Yeah, I got strong drink in the house, and I love it, and all that right there, but I, you know what? I don't touch that strong drink. Not like that. Ain't nobody finna sit there and drink no whole bottle of whiskey. Not even a half a bottle of whiskey, man. You know what I'm talking about? That stuff is a uh, display. You know, that's that's some company keeping, you know, stuff, man, for visitors and things. You know what I'm talking about? So every now and then, you might, you know, pour a little shot, sip it up, and leave it there. Man, ain't nobody gonna sit there and drink all that stuff like it's going out of style. You know what I'm talking about? So, so drinking, abusing alcohol, right? Drinking too much beer, drinking with drinking liquor like it's Kool-Aid, uh, walking around wanting to, you know, smoke trees and stuff, and, and roll up marijuana cigarettes and all this. Come on, family. This is some of the stuff we're doing. And when the young people see us doing it, they're gonna think, well, they done it, you know, so it's all right then, you know, shoot, I'm going to try it, right? And then when they get caught up out here, and that young dude just got out of, you know, BLET, basic law enforcement training, and all this stuff right here, and he's hyped up, and he's been trained with, you know, to look with his shop and stuff, his eye, and his ears for people that's breaking the law, and they have to be your kid, now you mad. Clean the went out. Y'all know how that stuff ends you know? up. Let's get down to verse 45. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28 and 40, 45. Let's look at it. He said, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Right? Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and the statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. That means upon you and your children forever. It's going to be a sign. I don't wonder. You go to any neighborhood. I don't care where you're from, right? There's a hood, what they call a hood in every state, right? There's a place where blacks live at. Go ride through the black community. Read this stuff in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And go ride through the black community. And see, though, see ain't this verse true in the Bible. He said these curses going to be a fun thing for a sign. It's going to be a sign. A sign identifies. So these curses are going to be upon some, a uh, certain people for a sign. And upon the seed, <clears throat> the Lord said, but forever, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. You serve, you know, uh, dope, man, for the abundance of all things, right? Uh, you know, some other quick way of getting your money. 
Right. There was something else you believed in, you know, Freemason, uh, you know, uh, Seven Day Adventists, some other religion, Baptist. Uh, you know, you had some other religion out there. Oh, I want to be a Muslim. <coughs> you know, <clears throat> Muhammad, Muhammad, you know, all of this Elijah Muhammad stuff. You got all this going on. So you don't want to serve this guy and keep his commandments. With joy and glad his heart for the money of all things, like nobody believed it. And because we didn't want to do it, look what he says, 48. Therefore, shall not serve thine enemies. So now, since you don't want to serve me, God is saying you're gonna serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in, and in one of all things, right? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So right there at verse 48. God said you're going to serve the enemy. That's exactly what's going on now. We are, we, it's a different kind of slavery going on, man. You know what I'm saying? We, we still buying the eight ball, right? We serving other things out here. Right? We're not the, we not the leaders in our home. Somebody else is, right? We either we in reverse roles or something. The woman is the head and the man got a tail between his legs. He ain't really leading from the front because he can't lead from the front because of the curses on his butt. Right? But you're going to serve other nations. You're going to serve your enemies. Since you ain't going to serve me, you know what God said? In thirst? He said in hunger and in thirst. Right? So that means for your food that you're eating and whatever you're eating and drinking. And in nature, even your clothing that you buy, right? And in one of all things, that house you need, that car you need, those other resources that you need to make it out here on earth, right? You're going to serve them to get all this stuff. And he's going to do what to you? Put a yoke of iron upon, about your neck or about, upon thy neck, right? So who did that literally happen to in history? Some people had a yoke of iron. Remember that thing Jango had on his head? Everybody looking at that movie laughing, right? But look at this thing that was on Django Head in that movie. That actually happened to our four parents. That happened to our people, right? But and we can understand that it happened. We know it when we went through it. Our people went through it, and we the children of the slaves that the Bible that the Bible's talking about right here. We the children of those people, and all this right here. But the major question that got the Resonated in somebody's head, right? It's how in the world are we getting this condition to start with? See, some people see this line that's been taught on the earth for oh, the white man. White people, they hating the black folks and all of this, and they went and put black people in slavery. That's impossible. You giving, you giving, you trying to give, you trying to give that group of people that you're talking about more power than they really got. Because if that's true, then it must be white power. How in the world is anybody going to manage that? Right? One, one group of people go and get a whole group of people, a whole nation of people, and utterly destroy them and put them all in captivity and put them in a situation where they are only oppressed. Right? And they spoil. And they robbed of everything. Right? That it, it happened in the earth. But God spoke it first. Why? Because of not keeping the laws, statute of commandments. That's why. It was a punishment. So the punishment of slavery fell upon the so-called Negro. Right? So God had already said it in the word of God. It was already in the book, been in the Bible. Right? Okay? So if God spoke it already, it's a prophecy. It was a prophecy that, that Moses taught the children of Israel back during their time. Okay? So because it was a prophecy, it was something that was going to come to pass. That means it's going to happen at some point. Right? Look what happened. The Lord, he spoke it. Then there was a people that God used to carry out what he said, right? Then you go run around with your uninformed behind, 
like these people just did something. No, not without the hand of God. Not without the hand of God. It would not have been able to happen, right? So if God hadn't already put that curse on us and said that, and already foretold in the word of God by the prophets, right, that it was going to happen to us, they wouldn't have been able to do that. But it, it happened. I spoke it, then the Lord used who he decided to use for his word to come to pass. The Lord said it was going to come back, boy. Don't y'all know that? God said his word would not come back, boy. And I said the 55th chapter. So how in the world do you think anything God say, even this right here, which is horrible, for us to have suffered this punishment, but we still going through this punishment right now. And we living, you know, as a result of this punishment. Right, we living that we still living in some of the impoverished conditions and missing the generational wealth that you talk about with all this stuff you hollering talking about Black History Month of the bone of twenty some days somebody done told you, right? But if Black History is important to you, this right here is important. This should be your major piece. You know why? Because we should all understand what is this situation? How do we get here? And God, how can we get out of this? How can we get out of this? How does it have to be this right here? Do we have to suffer this forever, Lord? Right? Skip down. Let's go ahead and skip down to verse 64 now. Right? Let's go on to 64. Then we're going over to the 30th chapter real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. What does it say? And the Lord, and the Lord shall scatter thee. Among all people. Who going to scatter us? The white man? Wait a minute. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there, wherever you're going, thou shalt serve other gods. Says it boys you. It says Jesus the Christ, right? You got this European, right? Man that was used, right? To replace the face of the righteous judge, Jesus the Christ, right? And the Father. This image was used, right? So that's a whole nother God, right? His Sabbath is on Sunday. Jesus in the Bible, his Sabbath is on what we call Saturday, right? That's a whole nother God, right? His birthday, December 25th. Jesus in the Bible, he said in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. But he didn't ever tell you nothing about December 25th. So this other God you didn't have, he got his birthday December 25th, right? This other God that you got, he said do Easter, not the Passover. This other God you got, he died on Friday and rose Sunday morning to sunrise, apparently, because that's what you're living. That's what you're talking about. So what can you read about him in this Bible? What did he say? He's going to serve other gods. That's a whole other God. Because Jesus of this Bible, he died on the day we would call Friday and not. He died on the day we would call Wednesday and not Friday. Wednesday, not Friday. Jesus in the Bible, he, he was crucified or died on that cross on a day we would call Wednesday and not Friday. But you got another God somewhere. He died on Friday. Then he turned around and rose Sunday morning at sunrise. And but the Bible says Jesus in the Bible, he rose from the dead of the dark. St. John 20, chapter verse 1 and 2. It wasn't no sunrise. Right? Jesus said the Bible, Matthew 28 and 1, the conditions are set. The Bible says, according to the record, that, that Jesus said the Bible rose from the dead just before the sun went down on the Sabbath day. Right? So God's time goes from evening to evening, right? So if Jesus said the Bible rose from the dead at the end of the Sabbath just before the sun went down on the Sabbath day, the day we call Saturday and not Sunday, right? Look how long Jesus was gone before sunrise come. Uh, the Lord said the evening and the morning got to come. Then it's another day. He said the evening and the morning. The evening come first, then the morning. God time go from evening to evening. Right? So it was not Sunday at sunrise. He rode a dead Saturday just before the sun went down at the end of the Sabbath day. That's when the end of the Sabbath day come, when the sun go down on the Sabbath day or the seventh day that they call, the day man calls Saturday, 
and not Sunday. Right? So you got a whole nother God with a whole nother gospel. He got a whole nother gospel to go with it. Right? Because apparently that's the God of uh, all these traditions you're dealing with, right? It's February, the month of February by the Roman Greco calendar right now. Ten days from now, you finna go buy, you finna go spend a hundred dollars on your wife for Valentine. Right? Cupid. And all this him. That's what's important to you. Many of y'all finna go do that. Right? But you're supposed to love your wife even as yourself. Every day. Not no February the 14th. According to the Bible, you're supposed to love your wife all the time. If you love yourself, you if you love yourself, then you're supposed to love your wife. Right? So what is all this stuff here? Mixed up with these traditions. You run once a year. Oh, baby, I'm going to do something special for you. You need to do something special for your wife every day. Right? If you love her. Right? Something. You know something. If it ain't never taking the trash out. If it ain't never buying her soda. When she, you know, get impoverished and get thirsty or something. Right? But y'all run out here. And talking about the February the 14th. And all of this, see what I'm talking about? So this is what's important. But God said that he was going to scatter us among all people from the one end of the earth, even to the other. And there, wherever you go at, that should serve other gods. That should matter to you. Because that's what we've done. That's what we're doing now. You can't tell nobody nothing about this Bible now. Because, they, you know, they got a personal relationship with Jesus now. They know the Lord, right? And he know my heart. He know my heart. That's what we hear, right? Because that's what you've been programmed to say. Lie to yourself. You know? You know, this is repetitive lies. You know, because somebody's teaching you that if you just speak it, speak it, speak it, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be. That's witchcraft. That ain't no truth. That's the witchcraft, man. Because I don't care how much you want it to be. Jesus is not a Caucasian. I don't care what you, how much you wanted to be. Jesus' birthday is not December 25th. I don't care how much you wanted to be. He did not die or was crucified on the day we were called Friday. I don't care how much you said to yourself and wanted to be. He did not rise from the dead early Sunday morning at sunrise. He had been gone at the end of the Sabbath. That's the night before. Therefore, the sun went down. If you if you out there at sunrise, good God, Jesus been gone. Look how much time it is from time the sun go down on the day we call Saturday to Sunday morning at sunrise, family. Jesus was gone that long, and you get up in the morning with your Sunday's best running around with your kids and stuff, talking about a dog on sunrise service and a golden egg. But he, he commanded you to keep the Passover. He became the Passover for us, and we supposed to, if we abide in Christ, we supposed to walk even as he walked. So Jesus told his disciples, go make ready the Passover. We're supposed to keep the Passover like our Lord Jesus Christ did. Right? But he said in there, thou should serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even with a stone. But that's what the so-called Negro are doing now. You got so-called Negro running around talking about they Muslims and things, bowing down to the, the rock, the black rock and stuff in Mecca. Going around that circle and stuff over there in Mecca and bound down to a rock. Right? So you worshiping a stone. Right? If you ain't doing that, you got some, you know, some wooden cross sitting up in the in, in the sunny church. <coughs> you got some wooden cross sitting up in the sunny church out there. Right? And you bind down to that thing. And the Lord told you in the Ten Commandments, don't bind down to no images. Right, but you get right there on the Sunday church with that great big wooden cross they got up there, and that Caucasian dude who named him says Ray Borgia and not Jesus the Christ that the Bible speak of. Oh, let us pray. You gonna buy your head. Right? So <laughs> you already disobeyed the commandment right there. Right there. That's right. As soon as that. So-called pastor, preacher, teacher, whatever he is, what, you, what, what the Bible says is a deceitful worker, right? False apostles, deceitful workers, right? He's the one that preached that Roman Christianity to you, right? They're the ones preaching Roman Christianity. They're the ones that's trying to preach something to you to call a bird 
to become a Catholic. Impossible, right? They're going to get there on Sunday and they're going to tell you, let us pray. You know what you're going to do? You're going to follow suit. Because that's what you've been taught to do, slave. You're going to follow suit. And you're going to pray and bow your head to something abominable that don't have nothing to do with your God. Ain't your God at all. The Bible said it's another God. Right? Which you nor your father either ever known. Even wood and stone. Let's go ahead and read. And among these nations, thou shalt find no ease. Neither shall the soul of thy foot find rest. They're going to work you to death, beat you to death, slave you to death, put you in prisons, blame you for everything. You're going to be the first one, first one fired and the last one hired. All of this stuff going to go down. Rocky Lee Chris is going to beat you down. That's what God is talking about. He said, neither shall the soul of thy foot find rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and fail of eyes and sorrow of mind. They said what happened when the police pulled up behind us. Right? You get a trembling heart then. Fail in the eye. Oh, my Lord. What the world? Woo! Are you scared now? Because you don't know what's going on, right? You, you reach and get a pack of cigarettes and move it up. A lighter or a can of soda you had in the cup holder. Bop, 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 bop. Free from alive. You know what I'm saying? You moved around, right? You done something, and now somebody done jumped to the gun, and they done shot you now. Right? Right? He said, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, right? And thou shalt fear day and night, right? And they shall have no none assurance of thy life. That's exactly what's going on right now. Right now. This is in, the, this is in what you call the Old Testament. Right? But it's still going on. This stuff and this stuff still happening. 66 said what? And the, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Right? Right? And thou shalt fear day and night. Right? And and shall have, and shall have none assurance of thy life. You don't know if you're going to live or die. We don't know that from day to day. Right? We can't have Russian roulette out here with these people, man. You know what I'm saying? Because they're out here. Right? He said, in the morning, thou shalt say with the God that we even. So when the morning comes, you want the day to go ahead and go by. Right? Because you, in the situation that many of us is in, you want the day to go ahead and pass. Good Lord Almighty, I'm going to get through this day to see the next day. Especially if you're incarcerated, locked up, or going through some kind of troubles with something. You want this stuff to go ahead and pass you. He said, in the morning, thou shalt say with the God that we even. And I even, thou shalt say with the God that we morning. Right? For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, right? And for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. He's it on social media and everywhere. Else. Let's go ahead. This is the last curse. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, meaning in condition that the children of Israel was in in Egypt, which was slavery. They were Hebrew slaves there. Right? So that's what it's talking about. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. You can't sell on no ship. From your ships don't sell on dry land from uh, Jerusalem down into Africa, which is Egypt. You can't do no, you can't ride no ship like that, right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. This time you're going into slavery with ships. By the way, wherever I speak unto thee, he said, Thou shalt see it no more again. Wherever you're going to be plucked and taken from, you ain't going back to that homeland. You, meet, you ain't going to see that no more. Let's go ahead. And there, wherever these ships come take you, you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond man and bond woman, for slave man and slave woman, and no man shall buy you. That was the transatlantic slave trade Bible prophecy right there. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. What you talking about, it happened in 1619 and the slaves that come to Georgetown or Jamestown, Virginia, you know, all of this right here that you teaching the children, all that. The transatlantic slave trade was prophesied by God that you're talking about in Deuteronomy 28.16. Why did we end up going into all of this? For not keeping any laws, statutes, and commandments that you cannot tell a Negro not to this day that this is important, this is what you need to do, this is where your focus need to be. Let's go to Deuteronomy 30 of chapter right quick. Deuteronomy chapter 30, we're on our way out of here now. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 
Let's pick it up at verse 1. He said, And it shall come to pass when all these things have come upon thee, the blessing and the curse that we saw in Deuteronomy chapter 28, right? Right, which I have set, which I have set before thee, not the white man, but God, because of disobedience, right? That's what it was, disobedience, okay? He said, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God have driven thee, by where thee called those slave ships we just read about, right? And shall return unto the Lord thy God, and, and shall what? Obey his voice according to all, according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. He said he's going to turn your slavery situation, right? And have compassion upon you, upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God have scattered thee. So he's going to return you back from all the places that he sent you around in, right? And the coming of Christ, the second coming of the Lord, he's going to gather his people from all nations and bring you back to the, to the nation of Israel, the land of Israel, the holy land, right? But God got to come back and do something because Esau is over there now calling himself a Jew. We just read about what happened to the Jews right here. If this stuff in Bible prophecy don't fit them people, they're not the one God talking about. Okay? Period. Bottom line. Let's go here. He said, if any of thine be driven out to the outermost parts of heaven, that means the outermost parts of the earth, right? From this will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from this will he fetch thee, right? And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, which was Israel, the land of Canaan, Israel, right? And shall and thou shalt possess it, right? And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, right? And the heart of thy seed, meaning the heart of your children too, you and your children, he's gonna circumcise your heart, right? And with all that soul, right? Let me see. Let me go ahead. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, right? And the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, right? And with all thy soul that thou mayest live. He's talking eternal life here. Everlasting life in the kingdom of God, right? And the Lord thy God will put all these curses. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but the Lord said, what did he say? It's important in verse 7. Let me get it together. Let's get it together. And the Lord that God will put all these curses that we just read about upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. Right? And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, right? And do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And the Lord that God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, right, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, right, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, right, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, right? That's what the bottom line is right here. So I'm done with this blog, but the bottom line, I want to put some of this on the table to just have an open discussion about it, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I understand the stuff we're talking about. What happened as a result of us going into slavery and being slaves and being captives in this place and other places around the world. But the point of where our focus needs to be is how do we get out of this? <clears throat> Let's go to one more verse. Let's go to Lamentations, the fourth chapter, verse 17. Because many people think, you know, voting rights, politicians, and, you know, judges and these officials, right? That's where people mind it. 
Let's go to Lamentation, the fourth chapter. Lamentation chapter 4, and verse 17. Right? Watch this. He said, as for us, our eyes has yet failed for our vain help. So God is telling you that you're looking for vain help. He said, keep it long, set your commandment, not this other stuff, right? So you looking for vain help, always looking to a politician that ain't finna do nothing. You trying to go, you trying to select what? Man, I, I, you know, the better of two evils, Republican or Democrat or liberal or whatever it is, is not going to get you, Negro. Whatever it is, ain't nobody for you. They want you destroyed. And you don't seem to understand that. Because you didn't read Psalm the 83rd chapter and you didn't have no idea that it was talking about you. Right? He said, that's for us. Our eyes have yet failed. For our vain help. God said it's vain help you ask him, bro. He said, and now watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. You keep watching for a nation that's never going to get you out of the curse that we just read about. The only way out of this curse is do what does say the Lord. Until our people do it, we're going to suffer. You done heard Pastor Zechariah Benjamin tell you that. You can do whatever you want to do, but you can put that in your pipe and smoke it. I'm telling you that's the truth. And you can holler all you want. Right? You sure can. White Jesus ain't got us out of nothing. Roman Christian concepts ain't got us out of nothing. All the stuff we doing now ain't got us out of nothing. We still catching hell. Right? And this is the bottom line. Right? So there's more on the table to be concerned about than just the bone of this 20 days that somebody throw the Negroes. Right? Talking about Black like History Month. No. There's something else going on. Right, and this is the major piece of it that many people are missing. Because soon as this come up, because many of us want to call ourselves Christian now, many of us say we're Christians, meaning follow the Christ. Christian ain't no religion. Being a Christian, by definition, I mean you talking about you as a follower of the Christ, but you ain't doing nothing that Jesus Christ taught in the Word. Neither are you doing anything that He did. It wasn't his custom to keep Sunday. It was his custom to keep the Sabbath. The seventh day the man called Saturday, not Sunday. Right? He didn't die on Friday. He did not die on Friday. It was a Wednesday, not a Friday. He never rose from the dead early Sunday morning at sunrise. It was at the end of the Sabbath just before the sun went down. He was gone way before Sunday morning sunrise. Right? Jesus gave us the dietary law. He said, don't eat nothing unclean. No pork, no shrimp, no crab, no lobster, no catfish. None of this other stuff is unclean. But we eating stuff on this planet that's killing us. So we drink it, we're digging our grave with our teeth because we don't want to live by Leviticus chapter 11. Right? You'd rather deal with holidays and waste your money on this paganism and things that don't have nothing to do with Jesus at all. Neither the Father but you're supposed to keep holy days, not holidays. The holy days is written in Leviticus chapter 23. Then seven annual high Sabbaths, what you're supposed to keep, not this other stuff. Right? So when we come and somebody come talk to you, yeah, we get ignored, we get shunned, right? People lie and say they're going to get up with us and don't do it and all this right here, and we don't never get here. That's what we need to get. Right here, because that's what the answer is. Friday evening, Negroes, Friday evening to Saturday evening is a holy day every week. That's the Holy Sabbath. You can't buy a sale on the Sabbath day. You can't be out at the club on the Sabbath day. You can't be doing all this stuff. You can't be cooking out and grilling and killing fire on the Sabbath day. You can't be cooking on no grill and stuff, man. Y'all can't be in the streets all day long. That's a holy day. You're supposed to be somewhere worshiping. What you think you're doing Sunday? That's what you're supposed to do on Saturday. Friday evening to Saturday evening. You got that time frame to have a holy convocation. It was commanded in Leviticus chapter 23 and in verse 3. Peace. I'm Brother Zachariah. Many is real. I'm out. Right? Get ready for the Lord's Sabbath day. Praise the Lord, family. Peace out. Look at black history as told by the prophets. Right? Brother Boo in there, man. The Israel of God is going to be teaching that. It's a five-part series that I believe start. Yep, it starts this Sabbath, right? So 
You better see the first leg, and he'll show you how to deal with all the other ones, right? And that's theisraelofgod.com or IOG. Just go to YouTube and search IOG, Black History Told by the Prophets. And you'll be able to find it. Israel of God. <clears throat> Israel of God. That's where that's going to be taught at, right? You can check out the House of Jacob, right? H O J. The House of Jacob Bible said in class. Houseofjacob.org. You can check out the House of Jacob, right? You can check out the Israel Church of Jesus with Brother Elijah, right? House of Jacob, Brother Daniel, right? The Israel of God, Brother Boy. <coughs> Right, the Bethel House of God is Pastor Johnson out there in Florida. Get somewhere and find the truth, family. But this was important. So peace. Right? Do some of this. Put this in your pipe and smoke it for what you call Black History Month. Peace out. <sighs>